While the success of the current talks seems to hang in the balance, there is consensus across the board about the impact of the impending cuts across all Stormont departments. This week, the Department of Employment and Learning published its doomsday scenario. A predicted cut of more than £100 million to the department's budget means close to 16,000 student places across Northern Ireland's further education colleges are at risk. That's almost one in ten places. When it comes to staff positions, some 500 jobs are under threat in the FE sector and 650. 50 in our two universities. Well, the Minister Stephen Farry is with me now, and with him the businesswoman Joanne Stewart, who's uh, examined this particular issue of funding for further and higher education. Minister, thanks very much for joining us. First of all, this is your doomsday scenario, but the reality, of course, mightn't be as, as tough as the picture you've painted, because this is all to do with the draft budget, which as yet hasn't been agreed. Well, it is a very challenging situation, as we find it uh, today. Uh, we're facing a 10.8 per cent cut, um, which means uh, 82 million coming out from a revised baseline, over 100 million pounds less than what we had uh, last year. Uh, I've asked the universities to tell me uh, what 10.8 per cent cut means. The same for the colleges, and these are the figures that they are producing. Um, it is a draft budget, and we will see if we can get a better settlement for the department uh, come, come January. And also, we will we'll also see how we can internally seek to mitigate um, the, the cuts that we are facing to try to protect the front line as best as possible. We're not going to slammy slice this budget. We're going to try to be as strategic as we possibly can. But virtually everything we, we do goes to helping the economy. So some very difficult decisions are looming on the horizon. Can I just ask you about the, the, the wider political context of mm -hmm. all of this? We've just heard from, from Derville and Newton their take on mm -hmm. the all-important talks this week. But we've got the First Minister and the Deputy First Minister now arguing for this peace and investment fund. Is that a good idea and would your department potentially benefit from that? Yes, I think there's more we can do in terms of financial assistance coming in from the UK government and indeed uh, from others, but that has to be very closely linked to reform in Northern Ireland. Simply getting more money to paper over the cracks and then going back with a begging bowl in a few years' time isn't going to cut it. So we have to look to, to how we can, for example, tackle the cost of, of a divided society. Uh, some maybe difficult decisions around uh, revenue raising, but we also have to, to see how we can actually use this money to address some of the very particular issues in Northern Ireland relating to the structure of our economy. Uh, for example, how we can rebalance between the, the public and the private sector. You know, with some very difficult decisions around uh, voluntary redundancies that, that are coming up. And also how we deal with the past, because this is something very particular to Northern Ireland. We can't sustain it alone. And I hope actually this week we, we get an agreement on the past as well, as agreement in terms of, of financing. Um, but that also means some more money coming on the table, because this is a joint responsibility of the Northern Ireland Executive, the British and the Irish Government. So just to be absolutely clear, do you think... Do you think there will be a deal on the financial package this week involving all of the parties and the two governments? I don't think, I don't think a deal has been done at this stage. In that, in that regard, I, I differ from what, from what Newton has said. I think the potential is here for a deal this week, but a lot of hard work has to be done. But also, we have to have a comprehensive agreement, simply just picking off one or two issues and banking the progress and still having a lot of tension in the system next year isn't going to help us. Relationships have deteriorated a lot over the past number of years. We have to start building trust and partnership between all the parties on, on the executive. Without that, we're simply just kicking the can down the road, and I don't think that's in anyone's interest. Joanne Stewart, you, you've looked at this whole issue of funding further and higher education, and you drew up a report a couple of years ago, uh, which made a recommendation, uh, particularly about uh, increasing university fees for students in Northern Ireland. Does it have to be this way at the moment? I mean, or, or is there another way of dealing with the financial situation that we're facing? Um, well, I think it's all about we, we've got to look about um, how we secure the future, um, and the the um, models that we've got at the moment are unsustainable. So when you look at um, higher education further education funding, we do have to look at what are the different ways that we can fund that because we don't have the money available within the, pub, uh, within the budget uh, to be able to support that. But we need to look at it as a whole. So yes, student fees is obviously one um, element of that. But there's also the role of business within higher education. They're one of the, the key stakeholders of the, the talented graduates that are coming out from both further and, and higher education. So we need to look at more scholarships, but also the universities are working with their businesses with regards to research and development and helping them to grow different products and services, growing companies. What about revenue raising? Because in your report in 2011, you suggested to the politicians that they needed to review university fees for students in Northern Ireland and put them up. Not as much as they are in England and Wales, but significantly. The politicians chose to ignore that advice. Was that a mistake? Um, well, at the time, they made a decision that um, what the report did was it highlighted where the gap was in, in higher education funding, um, and they decided to plug that gap with uh, providing more money um, to, towards higher education. The problem is, 
it's not sustainable and we do have to look to the future. But what my report also did was we looked at the maintenance grants. So one of the, um, the areas that we're really proud of is that we have the highest percentage of, of uh, students from lower socioeconomic groups who go to university as well as having the highest participation rate in, uh, in higher education. And what we were looking at was a way <coughs> of providing more support to more students um, to, to go to university. So it's not just about the, the student fees, it's about looking at the, 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 the holistic picture of, of how we fund moving forward. The universities um, also have to look at how they can bring more money um, into their sector, for example, through uh, more international students, through doing more work and partnerships with business. I mean, the Knowledge Transfer Partnership is a great initiative um, where universities and further education work with business to enable them to, to grow, create more okay. jobs and, and bring more wealth into the economy. Stephen Ferry, do you regret the fact that politicians didn't take the advice offered by Joanne Stewart, who put a lot of time and effort into looking at the numbers? She suggested that fees should go up, I think, to £5,750. That was at that time. I mean, you could have done that. You could have yeah. taken responsibility for this and tried to raise some revenue yourselves, but you didn't. You stuck your heads in the sand. Well, well we have had a sustainable solution for higher education over the past number of years, but but now, but not anymore. But now we need to look at, at options for, for the future. And I want to say, um, after we get this, this budget settled for the incoming year, we do need to have a big conversation involving all the stakeholders, universities, the students, the business community, and, and, and indeed others, uh, to work out the future of our funding model for higher education over the years to come. All of the options. So does that mean you'd look again? All of the options need to be looked at. That means you will put fees. All, up. Of, all of the options need, need to be on the table. But if, if we also look across the UK, we see that in Scotland they've gone down a different route in terms of their, their, their direct funding uh, through through tax revenue, uh, a very good university uh, system. Mm. So uh, students uh, don't pay. Just, uh, uh, students don't that, pay. In that Scotland. is correct. Look, the Scottish students don't pay in Scotland, yes. and in, in England they've gone for a different route in, in fees. So we have a choice as a de, as a devolved region. But w what I would say is that we have to be investing in higher education as well for further education. Our skills pipeline is so fundamental to our economy and in terms of the context of a lower level of corporation tax, the demand for high level skills is actually going to become even more acute. So, so it's this even hard, priority. this is the point Minister, I think it's even more difficult for people watching this to understand what is going on yes. because you're telling us that you should be, we should be devolving corporation tax powers here, cutting it, that companies will want to invest in Northern Ireland because of our skills base, and at the same time, you're eroding our skills base. Well, first of all, I mean, this is not my decision to cut, to cut the budget. Um, in terms of my own party, uh, we would have done things very differently in terms of, the, of this budget. But as we, as we face things today, yes, we're looking in what is a bizarre, counterintuitive situation. Whenever we should be investing in skills, we're actually potentially going to be t taking uh, skills out. Now, I will see what I can do to try to mitigate things, as things around, for example, higher level apprenticeships. Right. I see what I can do around protecting what we call narrow STEM, which is maths, physics, computer science, engineering. The, the very key subjects, all subjects are important, but the very key subjects that investing companies need. But we do need that high volume of students coming through. So there seems to be, Joanne Stewart, a huge contradiction here, doesn't there? I mean, the bottom line, many people would say, is that if our politicians were running a business, they'd be passed. Yes, it certainly isn't the um, the way that uh, business uh, go about when, when they're looking at you know w what we need to do in the future, how we need to sustain growth. Um, and part of what a business does is they have to look at ways of increasing the revenue that comes into the company um, so that that can then be invested in, in growing the, uh, the company and the skills of the, of the people. Um, and that's when you look at the draft budget, that's the one thing that is absolutely missing is there's nothing about how we raise revenue, um, apart from, sorry, small amount through capital receipts. There's over half a billion um, that we're putting in, in subsidies, with everything from student fees to, to prescriptions to, um, to free travel. And, and we have to be able to, to look at that realistically and say, how are we going to sustain this moving forward? OK, Stephen Fry, just a final question to you. You're responsible for further and higher education in uh, government and around the executive table. When you go in there to argue the case for your department, to argue against £82 million, £100 million pounds of cuts, do you get any traction? Do the other ministers listen to the special case you are making or do they just simply close their ears? Well, I think I am getting a good hearing in this regard, but obviously there's pressures right across the board. So I do think we need to have some fundamental questions about the budget. It's not a case of taking money off someone else to, to give to me. We do need to look at, for example, running our, our whole society more efficiently. We are wasting a lot of money in duplication, particularly in education. We do need to be to consider rev revenue raising, but that has to be in the context of where government itself is, be is becoming more efficient. If we're asking people to simply paper over the cracks uh, through give more money, then it w they won't buy into it. But if, we if we're more tight, then we can make a, a case for that. OK, all right, we leave it there. Thank you both very much uh, indeed. Let's hear more from Derval MacDonald and Newton Emerson. Newton, 
Um, do these cuts in further and higher education make any sense to you? Uh, well, they may not. They may not be very strategic, um, but there is um, there is a point that Joanne's being a bit diplomatic here. There is a point in her report that has been overlooked by everyone, which is she identified that universities here cost about a third more per uh, per undergraduate they put through for no identifiable reason, and I believe our universities spend about two hundred million pounds. So there is a massive saving to be made there. Uh, yeah, revenue what is raising the is fine. Uh, well, uh, probably high salaries and over administration. Although it, it wasn't clear, but it's their job to start drilling that down and perhaps a bit of discipline. W would help them do it. Um, I think there's another interesting wrinkle in the, uh, the fees issue, which is that they, uh, they are devolved and work in exactly the same way as welfare reform. We can have a different system from England, but we have to pay for it from the block grant. And it is very interesting that we were able to effectively block student fees without any of the political controversy we've had over blocking welfare reform. I know that this is not a purely middle class interest, but it's certainly not the most vulnerable you're talking about here when you're talking about university students. And we were able to, uh, to help them without any political controversy. In fact, I believe the funding to do this was taken off support for the long-term unemployed. Derville, what's your perspective on it? Because, of course, there's a huge crossover between students from the north going to uh, colleges in the south and, and vice versa. We had, uh, we had the minister just last week saying he wants £7 million from the Republic's government um, uh, for students from the Republic of Ireland who are attending further education colleges in the north. And I was one of them. I was one of those students who, uh, from the north who went down south. It's interesting on the, the corporation tax because one of the successes of the Celtic Tiger, the real Celtic Tiger, the first one before it was replaced by the property boom, was our corporation tax but aligned with that, which was a very young, talented skill force and a very strategically uh, uh, talented skill force in those STEM areas, in other areas. And it seemed that, that part of that ingredients for economic success was those two factors. And it would seem a real contradiction if the, the North is going to agitate for a devolved um, corporation tax and the right to set those things. And then it's just going to send, as we have in recent years in the Republic, to send all our young people abroad. There's something very, very counterintuitive and counterproductive against it, especially when Northern Ireland is going to try and sell itself as the low uh, corporate tax base, but meanwhile all of our young students are, are going to be missing out. I think a lot of people struggle to understand the logic on this. You just you can <coughs> perpetually go around in circles, can't you? Newton? Well, we, we don't have uh, we don't have a strategic oh, sort of overarching kind of cabinet government. Uh, you know, decisions are taken uh, 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 by Sinn Féin and the DUP via the Ministry of Finance, and then everyone else has to basically suck it up. So, that, especially when you're talking about next year's budget, which is a one-off budget because of the extension of the Assembly term, it's just being they're just. It, so they're just planning it on the hoof. Okay, again, we'll hear a bit more from you later uh, for now. Thank you very much.